Hey guys, Dr. Nordberg here again. You'll note today my voice is a little bit off. I hope to improve it again soon. Uh, up to this point, uh, well, let's say during my last 11 YouTube presentations, I've been giving you the basics of the best uh, mature buck effective hunting method I've ever developed. And I call it uh, opportunistic stand hunting which is taking quick advantage of fresh signs by, made by mature bucks and in this way keeping close to them every half day of hunting season. That's basically it. You know now there's a lot more to it than that. Now, uh, all these hunting methods I'm introducing, uh, or I have introduced, depend on deer signs. Uh, especially deer tracks. Uh, deer signs are the ABCs of regular buck hunting success. If you don't know a lot about deer signs, especially tracks and droppings and signs of feeding areas, uh, none of these hunting methods I've been teaching you are going to be that great. What makes them great it's a great knowledge of deer signs. And I put a lot of time into learning everything I could learn about deer signs. Uh, this started way back in the 1960s. Back then, I can remember, even during the summer months, I'd occasionally drive up to my primary whitetail study area, which was in Aiken County in Minnesota, with a rake. <laughs> and I'd go out into the woods and rate sections of deer trails so I'd have nice, clear, concise deer tracks to measure and size up. And I did that for a long time. Uh, uh, during hunting seasons, I uh, matched the lengths of deer tracks with deer that we took during the deer season and deer tracks uh, of deer that were taken by neighboring groups of hunters in the area. I went to places where Whitetails were processed during deer seasons and uh, measured hoofs of all kinds of deer and matched them with the kind of deer that made those hoof prints. And the reason I did all that is that after learning from wolves that uh, the best way to make sure that you're going to be close to wherever uh, uh, the deer you'd like to take are located on any one day is to always hunt very close to very fresh deer tracks. Now, in the process I learned that lengths of deer tracks related very well to the sizes of the deer that made them. And back way back in the 1970s, uh, my family of uh, my sons and daughters and I and hunting partners started hunting close to fresh deer tracks all the time. It became number one it, every day. None of us wanted to hunt anywhere else but very close to very fresh deer tracks. And then as we became more and more proficient at taking older bucks, it got to the point where we hunted on nowhere else except very close to very fresh tracks of mature bucks. And that was the key to being a regularly successful buck hunter. Now, finally in 1988, we came out with what I call uh, sign guides, whitetail sign guides, a whole series of them, 12 of them. These 12 cards provided the answers to all the questions I usually received from uh, what people sent me in the mail or they would ask when I was putting on seminars at sports shows and at uh, uh, sport clubs and all around the country, all the way from the East Coast, like up in L.L. Bean to uh, Buckarama and Atlanta, and east to the Mississippi River. And uh, the track guide became rather complicated. Uh, you can see here's a, this was my original, it was a big one like this. And uh, with, with this card and with this uh, ruler on the head, you can lay that down next to a car, a track, in the snow or in the dirt, 
and, and get its measurement, and then when you get that measurement, you could go to this side here, and it would tell you what kind of a deer made the track. And uh, people loved the thing, except it was big. How do you carry this around? And we learned too, it's kind of shiny. The sun could reflect off of it, and that could inform deer quite a ways away that something over there that isn't right. So, some years later, we decided to make a pocket size set of sign guides. And here's the first of the 12 cars of the track guide. And uh, it's in a, in a, what we call a poly pocket, a plastic pocket with a dull finish, but so it doesn't reflect sunlight. And uh, people love the thing. You put it in a shirt pocket, carry it with you wherever you're hunting. And ready guys to uh, identifying deer by the lengths of their tracks. Now, this is accurate about 99.5% of the time. A few years ago, uh, one person in our gang shot a big buck, really a nice buck, that had tracks that were considerably shorter than is normal for bucks of his age group. That doesn't happen very often. I think it, we've only seen that happen about twice in 25 years. I know people who say, oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe you can identify deer from their tracks. But that's all right. In fact, one owner of a, a hunting magazine said that to me one time. I don't believe that. <laughs> he says, oh, they all got different kinds of tracks, different sizes, this kind of, that kind of thing. Well, I kept careful track of this for many years, starting, like I said, in the 1960s, all the way up until this past year. Uh, but this is the true 99.5% uh, percent of the time, and because of that, uh, because we, we, we were really fussy about uh, always hunting close to uh, buck size tracks, mature buck tracks, uh, we take a lot of big bucks. This has been the primary reason uh, my sons and I, three sons and I, have, have taken 95 deer since 1990, mature bucks, just mature bucks, since 1990, and six, uh, my, uh, three of my grandsons have taken six more recently during that time. That's 101 mature bucks in about, what, 24 years? How, do, how many people do you know have done that? You got to know that this tells you about how important uh, fresh tracks of mature, of mature bucks are in deer hunting. So anyway, I've been at that, like I said, for a long time. I've measured tracks year after year, got everybody else doing them, and using my sign guides. And then in 1991, I decided to write a book. It's my fourth edition of Whitetail Hunter's Almanac, this red one. And this one explains more than 100 whitetail signs, deer signs, made in the woods, and what they mean. And uh, to me, this is one of my most important uh, of whitetail hunters almanac. I, I can, this is the basis for buck hunting. And tracks are just a part of it. There's droppings, and there's uh, antlerubs and ground scrapes, and there's uh, all the signs that uh, make up a, a feeding area, uh, which most hunters have a lot of trouble uh, identifying uh, and all kinds of just a great number of signs. Now, more recently, here's my new book, my 10th edition. I included the important aspects of, of using uh, uh, whitetail tracks and whitetail hunting in this book. Like, for example, here's a, here's a ruler on a very fresh track in the snow. And a very fresh track has very sharp edges on, along the edges of the track. Here's one track like that. This is a four inch track, it's really wide. If you shot the buck that made that track, he'd be on the wall today. That'd be a really big one. Here's a number of hoofs from uh, uh, a deer all the way from fawn to uh, a three and a half year old buck. And you can see, the little deer have much smaller hooks than the big deer. 
medium sized deer, a medium sized one. There's a hoof where the tip is broken off, and that's not uncommon amongst bucks where pond ground scrapes a lot in the fall. And if it's rocky soil, they'll chip and wear down those the ends a little bit. But even with that, their hoofs are quite a bit longer than the hoofs of a, of a yearling buck or a, or a mature bull doe. Uh, and uh, so there's no way you're going to mistake uh, the track of a mature buck from all other deer living in your woods. But anyway, here's more. Here's a, when I first wrote my book about all whitetail signs in my fourth edition, this, this graph was in the early part, and it's an important graph. It uh, relates the live weight of whitetails with lengths of their hoofs. And there's two, two lines here. The one is does. When they get to be about two and a half, they're... Uh, Weights level up. There's some does get to be 170 pounds in Minnesota, but most of them are 140 to 150. Now, in bucks, their their line widens up because there can be quite a difference in in the weight of bucks in the classes of bucks from three and a half to uh, six and a half years of age. Some of them are maybe only 200 pounds live weight, and some are a little over 300 pounds live weight. Generally, the big ones, the ones that are high on the ground, are the ones that turn out to be uh, dominant breeding bucks, weighing a little over 300 pounds and dressing out about 243, somewhere in there, uh, in weight. But this, the way it relates to hoof length was pretty darn good, and, pretty, and from year to year, it would just turn out the same way and all the deer that I studied and measured and uh, so that's an important thing. The other thing I'd like you to see in here, this page. For years and years I used, on my track measurements, I used the tip to do claw measurement which is a longer measurement and uh, that's great if, you, if you're a hunter in Minnesota where you usually have snow in the winter but last Oh, about 12 years, we had years where we had no snow and we had unusually warm temperatures, dry ground, and you didn't see any dew claw impressions in the tracks. And, uh, and I thought, well, this is true in most states, in the southern half of the United States, they probably don't have snow to, to give them dew claw impressions. So I decided what I need to do is change the measurements for my dew claw or my track guide uh, to hoofs only in inches. And for the first time, actually, I've got that kind of measurements included in my newest book, my 10th edition. And uh, they're all here. Uh, there's a, a size for a pond and a size for a yearling doe and size for mature does and yearling bucks, which are about the same size. Our yearling bucks go 140 to 150 pounds, just like that. But in the fall, the yearling buck tra tracks are usually not uh, accompanied by fawn tracks. If you have that size track accompanied by fawn tracks, well, that's that's uh, a doe with its with its fawn. Uh, if you have that and you find droppings made by that deer that are clumped, uh, bucks have clumped droppings in in the fall. It's it's a yearling buck, so. That's how you differentiate those. But then there's this in-between size, two and a half year box. Uh, they're sort of getting kind of big. They can get up to 195 pounds, but most of them are a little less than that, like 175, 180 live weight. And then you get into the final one here. When they get to be three and a half years of age or older, uh, where their weights can differ quite a bit, uh, going from 200 to 300 pounds in the, uh, for the for bucks that age. The tracks are in between there, and they they're usually the ones we're looking for are three and three quarter inch to four inches for a whole Well, these are things you gotta know if you're gonna be a buck hunter. You can't key on bucks unless you know this kind of information. You know, and there's more to it. Actually, you know in 
you know, in the, in the United States, bucks living in southern states are smaller than bucks in northern states, from Montana and southern Canada to Maine. These bucks are the largest bucks in the nation. Maybe the biggest are in Iowa. I have a suspicion western Iowa has biggest bucks in the nation. As far as weight goes, they get really fine handlers too. Uh, good genetics there. <coughs> now, a big buck down in Texas might only weigh 125 pounds in Arkansas. But they, they have great genetics for large handlers down there. So 125 buck, uh, pound buck down there might be in the record book. Lots of Texas deer are in the record book because of great genetics. So that just because they're big doesn't mean they're automatically record book bucks. But just because they're big usually means that if you take one, boy, well, that's a nice buck and you, you want to put them on the wall at home, proud of them, and you should be. Okay, you guys, um, here's the page that tells you how to figure out lengths uh, accurate lengths of whitetails where you want. Uh, there's a number of equations here that you use. You plug in the numbers and, and you'll come up with proper lengths of tracks of all whitetails where you want. It starts with finding real tracks of a doe accompanied by real tracks of a fawn. There you, then you know you got, here's an adult doe and her tracks are say two and three quarters inch long. You start with that with that number and use that number in five in four other equations. And uh, you already know the do the yearling bucks where you live, they're gonna have two and three quarter inch long tracks as well. But you use these equations on this page and you'll come up with lengths, accurate lengths of whitetails living where you on. And I might say uh, your biggest buck maybe has three and three quarter inch tracks. Uh, maybe you go start with two and seven eighths to three and three quarter for these bucks, uh, for bucks three and a half to six and a half years of age where you are. But whatever you come up with, this is a page that tells you how to come up with those lengths. From, so from that time on, when you're walking in the woods and you see it, and if if you do a lot of measuring, you'll, it'll get to be automatic. You'll know, oh yeah, that's a big buck. It, he's a buck three and a half to six and a half years of age. You won't even have to get down there to measure it. Or use your sign guide to put it along sign the track to measure it. Uh, you'll just say, that's one, and you're going to be right. You're going to get to that point. Or, that's the track of a doe. And you, you know, you, you've measured so many of them. That's automatic. And that's going to be really important in buck hunting because one of the things you got to do when you're looking for uh, fresh tracks of bucks during the hunting season is don't stop to measure tracks. <laughs> you got to be able to say, that's a big buck track. Uh, you got to keep going without stopping. You know, we talked about that last time, so I won't go into that further. But you got to become good at assessing tracks of deer. So, um, this is, this is, uh, these track measurements are good from Montana to Maine and probably down to the Ohio River Basin as well. And then, uh, to, for you guys hunting in southern states, this will get you the track links for your deer. And pretty accurate. Okay, so, it's all on this one. So, anyway, and there's more. Besides size, you need to know a lot about what tracks mean. The back side of this card has a lot of things like that. For example, if the deer was walking and the tracks are about 12 to 18 inches apart, is walking, and if the hind prints, you know, and if the tracks alternate from side to side like that, and the hind prints always fall right inside the print made by the front hoofs, that deer was walking, and it was not alarmed. And you come along and you find, there's four inch tracks and stones. Big buck crossed his trail here. And he walked. It means he wasn't alarmed when he made it, when he walked by. And what it means is, he's probably watching you right now. And what you do at this point is going to make the difference between 
whether you're going to have a chance to take that buck or not. That's important at home. If he was trotting, his hopes would be quite a ways apart. They'd be three, five, up to five feet apart. And they'll kind of follow a straight line, and the hind hoofs are dropping inside the front hoofs as it's going. That's a trotting deer. He's he's alarmed. He's alarmed enough if he's a buck to be abandoning his range right now. His fresh tracks. He's gone for the season. Then big bucks abandon their range during the hunting season. It's pretty rare you're going to see that big buck again for the rest of the hunting season. So that's bad. You'd be wasting your time on fresh tracks like that one. Same with these. Look, these C-shaped uh, groups of tracks that are 15 to 25 feet apart. That's a bounding buck. He's abandoning his range right now too. He's running with his tail up, probably snort. You're wasting your time on tracks like that too, no matter how fresh they are. Like here's another one. Here's here's tracks going every which way, zigzagging. A lot of times the hind print is outside the track of the front print. That's a feeding deer. How about that? That's a sign of a feeding area. It's this deer that is not alarmed at all. Um, if you find that kind of track, say in, in the morning you're heading back to camp at the edge of a feeding area, chances are if that deer didn't start bounding or, or, or uh, trotting away from that feeding area, that deer is going to be back in that feeding area later today or tomorrow morning. Isn't that interesting? You know, these are things you need to know to, so you aren't wasting your time on tracks that can't give you uh, a chance to take a big deer. So, there's other things too, like um, uh, here's uh, uh, some tracks of a buck dragging his hoofs from track to track in the snow. We talked about that before. Those are tracks of a big buck that's under the influence of doe and estrus pheromone doe and eat pheromone. And that buck is going to be with that doe for 24 to 6 hours, 26 hours. That's how long she'll be in heat. And you find those fresh and if that doe just started being in heat, she's going to be in this feeding area near where these tracks are found or this bedding area where these tracks are found for the next 24 to 26 hours. The morning and the evening for feeding, she'll feed no matter what. The buck has to just wait because of that, patiently or, or impatiently. But she's going to feed, and that buck will be with her. Aren't that, isn't that interesting? Those are things to know about. You find tracks like that, and if you play your cards right, that's almost certain to provide you with a chance to take a big buck, a big dominant breeding buck. And uh, so, and this, the feeding deer, same thing. If it's a doe or a buck, it makes those tracks. If it's a doe and heat, it makes those tracks. Or if it's a buck, it makes those tracks. And it, um, the chances are really good, he's going to be back in that same feeding area later today or tomorrow morning, like I said. So, look at what you can learn from deer tracks. And imagine how much that kind of knowledge enables you to take big bucks. It's terribly important. That's number one in a Dormer deer camp. Well, wind direction is number one. This is number two. But uh, these are things you need to know to be successful. I can teach you a lot of, I can teach you six great hunting methods for taking big bucks. But they won't do you any good unless you know this kind of information as well. Now, my new book, as you see, has all that kind of information in it. But if you want information for all deer signs, that fourth edition that I showed you, the red one, is an awfully good book for that. And believe me, I put a lot of work into putting those things together. So don't let anybody tell you that doesn't work. It works like you wouldn't believe. It works. It's worked really great for us Nordbergs for since 1990, and uh, 
what can I say? I don't know anything else that can that can improve your chances for taking big bucks better than that. Now there are other science cars <laughs> to know, like droppings and uh, uh, signs of feeding areas and uh, antler rubs of ground scrapes and how they relate to hunting and what they mean and best times to hunt them and sizes and uh, there's at least six characteristics of a dominant breeding bucks handler rub to know about, things like that. We'll cover those in the future. But all these are important, you know, I, all, all the great information I provided you in my preceding YouTube presentations are really great, but they're not great if you don't know tracks and what and the information they provide. And there's more uh, of that kind of thing uh, that's not on that card. So anyway, now you guys, you got some studying to do. <laughs> you got to memorize those numbers. You know, I just told you these things. Uh, how are you going to remember all that? Uh, you, you know, I've sold a lot of whitetail sign guides over the years and a lot of whitetail hunters almanacs over the years. And I've looked at books and guys sent me pictures of books and these books are all dirty and, and dog-eared and they've got all kinds of lines and colored pencil uh, markings in their books and they're practically ruined and they've been carrying around their pocket while they're deer in it because they're constantly referring to these books. To see what Dr. Norbert has to say about this or that. I know there's something here somewhere. Oh, here it is. So they know what to do, what they know what it means. And this is the way you should hunt these things. So uh, these are things I, uh, you know, I could spend weeks and weeks and weeks going over every detail about how to hunt big bucks. But I still couldn't cover them all in, the, in as much detail as I've done in my books. And especially my newest one. That's why it's so huge compared to the other almanacs. So, uh, you really, you know, for your sake, I'm not, this is not just to try to improve book sales. This is, I want you to be a, a really successful buck hunter, and I want you to have the information at hand or near camp and before seeing, and think about after seeing, uh, so you can make sure that you're doing what you need to do and make sure you know what you need to know to be a regularly successful buck hunter. That's what I want to do. You know, you'll find information like this in a lot of outdoor magazines these days. Uh, a lot of this information uh, is, is provided as if the person who wrote the articles invented the idea, which is all right. You know, it was my, my goal in the beginning to try to help hunters to be much more selective, uh, much more successful, uh, much better at taking older bucks, uh, being more respectful of whitetails, uh, learning how to enjoy the sport much more, uh, camping where you hunt whitetails, things like that. That was my idea because, gee, it's so great. I would, I would wish everybody, every youngster coming into the sport would know how to, to enjoy whitetail hunting like I've been in hunting or enjoying it. My boys and my own grandsons are enjoying it today. I want you all to be enjoying the same things. And so if other people uh, use my material to help in that regard, that's great. Uh, as long as they do it accurately. Some of them even occasionally uh, say, I learned this from Dr. Norbert somewhere at a seminar or from one of his books or magazine articles. I've written I've written more than um, 3,000 <laughs> magazine articles about whitetails and whitetail hunting in my time. So a lot of places that people learn it. And some people get a second or third time, you know. But things can change along the line when they do that. I was a scoutmaster. One of our tricks around the fire in the evening is to whisper a story, not too long. One, one scout's here. And tell, then they go around the circle. Now you tell that story. You go all the way around, come back, get to the last guy, 
you know, tell, you stand up now and tell the story. It'd be completely different from the original story. So that happens, you know. So, uh, but anyway, anyway, um, I don't know of anyone else who's done uh, so so much research like this, if any of it, who writes. Uh, there are people who are biologists uh, that uh, their biology is concerned with white-tailed deer, but most of their writing is in uh, in professional editorials, which white-tailed hunters never see, and it, most of that doesn't relate to improving white-tailed hunting success. So it probably wouldn't help you much even if you read those articles. But all of my all of my research is hunting related. That makes it very different from what other people have done since who knows when. Uh, maybe most of it was known by uh, the, the people that lived here before the Europeans uh, migrated to this country. Maybe all of it. Maybe every good young uh, Indian boy learned that, well, a big foreign track, that big buck. And, you know, that's what they'd be hunting. They probably knew that. Because without knowing it, maybe they'd starve to death. <laughs> well, since hunting became uh, a sport, they call it a sport, uh, in the 1930s, uh, because uh, deer numbers were way down because everybody was hunting deer year round, subsistence hunting. We had to make, we had to cut that hunting time down to a few short weeks in the fall and have uh, limits of one deer per hunter, things of that sort, in order to bring our whitetail populations back. Well, when that happened, all that was so necessary, make sure you didn't starve to death because you weren't a good hunter, got lost. The knowledge of the mountain men and people like Daniel Boo and Davy Crockett never got written down in books. Nobody, no book said, big bucks up here in Montana have four inch tracks. No, it, you won't find it anywhere. Uh, uh, or big bucks in Maine uh, drag their hoofs in the snow from track to track when they're under the influence of doing estrus pheromone. You won't find that anywhere. Uh, it didn't, that knowledge didn't come to light until I just broke my back <laughs> trying to learn it all over again, things that people used to know. So, but it's all there for you now, today. And uh, do your best to learn these things. And you're going to be a hunter uh, to be proud of. I mean, people are going to want to, they'll be constantly asking, how do you do this? How come you're so lucky? How come you keep getting big bucks every year? Just amazing. Well, it's going to happen to you, really. So with that, I'll say goodbye. <laughs> and we'll, next time we'll talk to you, we'll talk about droppings. So see you then. Be sure to visit my website. Here's the link. Here you'll find links to my blog posts, my Twitter account, my YouTube account, my Amazon store with links to my ebooks, my son's eBay store, a money saver if you're ordering from Canada or other countries. And be sure to sign up for my email updates. Here you will also find deer and bear hunting articles, my website bookstore, and much more.